Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to be framing this porch header that you see here behind me. And if you haven't built a porch header before, there's nothing to it. If you can frame any kind of beam or girder, you can frame a porch header. It's about the same concept, but there's a few things you want to keep in mind before you get started. And let's go over those right now. The first thing is you need to know how far of a span you're going to have for whatever header material you're going to use. For instance, I'm using 2x10s on this beam. And I really don't need 2x10s, it's a little bit overkill, but I just think a nice beam looks good. So you're going to have something about like that. You can probably get away with a 2x6, but that's alright. So that's the first thing you need to know. And uh, that's going to determine the span of your post, your max span you can have. In this case, we're going to go 8 foot apart because with those 2x10s you can easily go that far apart. And this porch behind me is going to be 24 foot wide, so every 8 foot apart is nice spacing. And then we're going to use 8 foot railing. So the first thing you need to know, like I said, is the spacing of your post for whatever size header beam you're going to be using. And then what kind of railing you're going to be using and what span it's going to be in. So if you get a PVC railing, a lot of times you can go 8 foot on those pretty easy. So... Uh, that's the next thing and and then the post you're going to actually be using to hold up your beam is going to determine the thickness of your beam I'm going to be using five inch wide uh, trim around the post I'm just going to be putting a post wrapped in PVC so it's going to give me a five inch um, width I got to be so ultimately the beam total is probably going to be five and a half inches wide so I'm going to show you what I got done behind me so you know what's going on all right, so here's that trim piece before I show you the beam that I got started so far. This is uh, from edge to edge here. We got, I think it was five inches. It is five and three quarter. So we want to make sure our beam's at least six inches wide. So keep that in mind. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys yet, but um, I buy stocks through an app called Weeble. I have a link in the description if you want to check it out. I think they give you a couple free stocks if you deposit $100. Um, I know it's at least one free stock, but I'm an affiliate with them. I get a little kickback if you sign up. So just want to mention it. If you want to or not, it's totally up to you, obviously. So let's go check out this beam that I got started here. Actually, I had my dad come down and help me because some things you just can't do by yourself, and this is definitely one of them. So if you look up in here, I had to notch out for that beam going up into the wall. All right, I wanted to show you what's going on here. If you look, I got a pocket this is going to set in. So we got a three and a half inch pocket right here. We already got one of the parts of the beam in. And if you look, I got a board out here. You can kind of see it keeping that beam from kicking out as I'm working on it. And then we're going to, like I said, have to come clear out to this mark right here. That's how wide ultimately the beam's going to be. So structurally, it's just gonna be two ply, but I'm gonna pad it out even more to give me the enough uh, width for that trim piece I was telling you about so it looks very nice when it's done. This is the trim that I was showing you earlier, and these are the posts that wrap this post. That's a solid pressure treated four by four, so it's just coated with this plastic post jacket. So there's the beam looking down the uh, run that we got now. So it's just roughly setting there. Maybe kind of hard to see because of the way the sun shine on the camera, but there's a splice there at this temporary post and a splice right here. There we go. So that's our first run through there. And this is nice just because it gives us a place to put our temporary post. And now what I'm gonna do next is put a actual um, temporary post that's gonna actually hold the weight that's gonna be coming down right here. So let's get that done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and measure that distance from the top of the truss down to the bottom of the base that's going to be our temporary post. Hundred and twelve and an eighth. Hundred and nineteen and an eighth. Let's get those cut. If you look, the post that's already there is nailed to the actual beam. Now these are going to be under the beam to catch the weight coming down. All right, so that's what that looks like. We just got a nice little T shape. So that way, wherever we break on our uh, next piece onto the beam, it's gonna break onto that joint. So there's extra support. 
So what I'm doing here is just hooking on to that little board I just put on there and pulling to get the distance of this part of the beam I got to cut and now I got to cut lifting it up and then once I was starting to go up the ladder I realized hey my ladder is in the way so I'm going to have to move my ladder like I did here on and move that to the other side and going to go back up the ladder here and it was success. And then I'm just going to go and tack that on there and then nail it off like normal. All right, I got all the structural parts of the beam built. If you look here behind me, that is all the structural part of the beam. When I say structural, that's the part of the beam that's actually holding weight. And now I'm going to just add a layer of plywood, then another board onto that to make it the right thickness that I need before my trim boards go on. So um, what you see here, that's going to be actually holding weight. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut down some plywood, rip it down, and then put it on the face of this uh, beam. And then, like I said, put another inch and a half board on it. So when you cut this plywood to sandwich between these 2x10s, just cut it a little bit shy of what actually is the thickness of the board. So for instance, this is actually 9 and a quarter, the thickness of these 2x10s. And I'm just ripping this stuff down to about eight and three quarter because you don't want to be getting it in that tight because it really doesn't do anything structurally it's more or less just a spacer so um why fight it you know what i mean so right here i'm just cutting up some scraps i had laying around the house i didn't want to waste a big piece of plywood because right now that stuff's like 30 some dollars a sheet the picture is a little dark just because the sun's shining in and my camera's trying to compensate for that but what i'm doing here is i'm just tacking one nail on each end of that plywood because you don't need a bunch of nails to be holding it because once the other board goes on top of that you're going to nail that off with several nails so there's no use of just wasting a bunch of nails for a piece of plywood and if you see here you got to go up and down the ladder a lot when you have four foot pieces <laughs> if you had eight foot strips um, clearly you'd only have to go up down the ladder half as much all right before i nail that other board on the other side of the beam here i'm going to go ahead and straighten this beam out and uh, nail it off because after that other boards on the other side it's gonna make it harder to adjust so let's go ahead and I got my string line right here you can see it there and now my measurement here is two and a half inches so I'm gonna pull off that string line going all the way down that beam two and a half inches I'm gonna anchor it up in the trusses so that way it doesn't shake back and forth and then uh, that's gonna keep our beam nice and straight to nail the beam off, if you haven't seen my girder beam video, all you got to do is nail a W pattern down one side and then a W pattern down the other side. And that way, I guess the theory is the weight pushes like a truss. So when it goes down, it distributes the weight more evenly. But you could probably nail it straight down on every 16 inches or so. Probably do the same thing, but that's just what I've been taught. All right, I'm just going to start from this end and nail it off in that W pattern like I was telling you about. It's kind of hard to get that nail gun up inside of that uh, where that beam is just because the fascia board is a little bit closer than the width of my nail gun. So I kind of got to angle it up. And at the same time, I'm trying to pull off or uh, pull a tape off that string line to keep it straight and nail it um, to that truss that's up above it to keep from going back and forth like I was just telling you. And uh, to do that, I noticed I got to keep my ladder on the fascia board and not against that uh, beam going across there because the weight of me on that ladder definitely makes it way harder to pull it towards me, as you could uh, probably already imagine. So once I got against that fascia, it started going a little bit more smooth, but you know, it's still something you got to wrestle with because that beam is so thick it's hard uh to pull it back and forth after even just a few nails in it so you know i guess the best practice would probably be just put that first row crossed on that beam then get it perfectly straight then to nail it into the truss but what a lot of people do is they'll go ahead and build this beam before they set trusses so that way they don't have to fight with it like this and then just string line it and then use the truss to uh set it where it goes but, um, you know, I had to hurry up and get this thing framed up and dried in, so I ended up building this beam after the fact, which really isn't that big a deal. But I know a lot of people will do it um, before they set trusses, so 
again no matter how you do it that's just uh your preference really either way is not right or wrong just so you know all right since i got the string lining done now i'm just going to pat it out with one more two by ten sorry the picture is a little dark just because the way that sun's uh shining in it's kind of darkening out the image of me up in the uh rafters there but um yeah you just shoot it off like uh you would any other girder or beam and uh you know this is where having a nail gun is like a godsend because if you had to hand nail that off i'd be there uh, you know easily three times four times as long as it would be using a nail gun you know a nail gun has its complications too but it's just so much faster i definitely could not uh, imagine building a house with the old hammer and nail like people used to do in fact, I'd like to upgrade and get the little battery DeWalt 20 volt nailer. And if you guys have used that, comment below if you use the battery framing nailer. I'm just afraid to buy one because I don't know if it would hold up like nailing off a beam or something. I could see, you know, a little small uh, remodel or something. But as far as doing actual high volume, I can't imagine this battery one's lasting. But just let me know in the comments what you think. Then after a long day's work, you're finished up with a nice, beautiful framed up porch beam that's the final product on the rough framed porch beam and down here it's just sitting on simple uh blocks and uh i'm going to be framing up the porch in the spring but didn't want to buy the material right now so figured just use these temporary posts to keep it held up while they do the roof and if you look here these uh trusses are cantilevered over 12 foot so you can get away without having a beam there for a while but before they put all the shingles on i figured it'd be smart to uh, put that beam in in case uh it does push down on these too much and we don't want to break a truss or anything so the truss guy told me to make sure i put the beam on before i do the shingles but the plywood it's totally fine because it's not that heavy and this is stronger than it looks too to be honest with you all right, guys, that's all there is to framing a porch beam. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to comment below with any questions you have about building a porch beam. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.